Hi, everyone. Welcome. I think we're about ready to get started. I want to introduce myself. My name is Elena Tinney. I'm an art lab facilitator with BAM PFA, and we are very excited that today we have Nathaniel Russell, Nat Russell with us, joining from his studio, and he's here to talk to us about his art and his process, and um, you guys will get the chance to ask questions. Um, if anyone has any questions, they can ask them in the chat box and I will read them aloud to Nat and he will answer them as he takes us through his studio. I'm gonna pass it over to Nat now. Welcome Nat. Hi, thanks for having me. Very happy to be here. Um, I am currently in uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. It's where I live, it's where I grew up. Uh, I lived in the San Francisco Bay area for about 10 years and for a variety of reasons, I ended up back in Indiana not too long ago. Um, and I also uh, am in the process of moving house. So right now my studio is, like a, it's a spare bedroom that I've kind of stuffed full of flat file. I'm gonna pick up my phone and show you guys around so it's not too seasick. But it's like full of flat files and shipping areas and I have a little cool window and then like a little drawing zone over here. Um, but there's also still a lot of moving boxes and that sort of thing. Um, but, you know, to be honest, spare bedrooms and garages and basements have always been where I've made art and had studios. Um, I'm hoping to convert a garage in this place into a proper studio, but um, you know, I think we all deal with what we got and make the best of where we are. So you don't need, you know, a clean white room to make stuff. I don't anyway. Um, but yeah, thanks for coming to talk to me. I hope you will ask questions. I hope you will. If there's anything that you guys want to talk about or see, I'm more than happy to show to you. Um, it's been a pretty weird time this past year or so. Um, and I think like a lot of people have been sort of relearning how I do things and make things. And, uh, but I have found something that's very cool is in the process of moving, like going through boxes and opening bags. I have found a lot of things that I made a long time ago or not that long ago that I forgot about and are new to me. And that is always really exciting to me because you can get really stoked and excited about ideas that you had 15 years ago, five years ago, five minutes ago, and uh, use them again. Or it's, it's, it's finding like a little treasure, you know? And I, I would like to share a couple of those treasures that I've discovered. And I'd like to show you guys my new-ish work zone. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna pick up my phone and show you guys, and I'm gonna flip it around so you don't have to look at me if I know how to do that. Here we go. So this is a flat files. A lot of stuff is in there. Um, I gave my son his own flat file because he likes to come in here and draw and he gets really bummed when he can't find drawing paper. Um, here on the ground is a, it's a rug that I designed. These are like stars and comets. This was made by a company in Japan called uh, Pacific Collectives. It's a nice, it's a, it's a very nice rug. It's very soft. Um, George Harrison. Um, this is a cool like sewn collage spray paint fragment um, that was sent to me in the mail by my friend uh, Thomas Campbell, the artist, uh, fantastic painter, filmmaker, photographer. He sends really good mail. And that was one of them. Um, 
big fan of blue tape. I think everybody should have some blue tape. Um, if this gets super boring, let me know. But I did, I'm just going to show you because I'm thinking about it. These are some really cool, like, welcome beads that were given to me by a student in a workshop that I taught in Honolulu a couple of years ago. Really cool. This is a necklace with like my grandfather's like silhouette as a kid on it. It says Clem, which was his name. It's pretty cool. And this peace sign, this was my dad's. My dad was in the Vietnam War. And uh, you know, he made he made this over there. This is like a combat boot strap. I don't know. There's a lot of history to it. It's pretty intense. Um, but anyway back to art. So I love music. I like to make music. I like to listen to music. Here's like my little music zone over here. Um, and when I first moved to California 20 so years ago, I went to Kala Art Institute and uh, used the letterpress machine there. And I made woodcuts and I made this seven inch, right? So this was my band, Birds of America. And it's a fold out. So this is a three color letter press, right? So there's like a gray and a black. Um, and I cut that out of linoleum and then set all this type and lead type and I printed 500 of them for some reason we thought that we could sell 500 of these seven inches by a band that no one heard about or cared about but I'm so glad we did and it's such a cool thing to have um but hey I was digging around and I found the old blocks I don't throw a lot of stuff away but I found the exact blocks that I cut for these and I never even cleaned the ink off that which is not a cool move but um hey man repress coming soon right but i'm really stoked that i have this and that i made records i mean records you can listen to but also like a record like a, a memory of this time and this object and um i could have just let it fly by and never thought about it but now i can hold it in my hand and it feels good um also wanted to show you guys this. This is, I made a lot of records, um, art, a lot of record art over the years, but this was the first album art I ever made. Uh, this was for my high school band. Well, I, I was in the band for like six months and then they kicked me out because I wasn't very good at playing bass guitar, but their name was called Tomato Justice, which is a pretty funny name. And these, is, these are the dudes were like my friends in high school and they wanted me to make the art so i made this like very bummed looking dude kid high school kid um again funny document cool document there's a really intense version of take on me by aha on there um yeah maybe i'll put that on later towards the end None of the songs I wrote made it on the record, you know, probably for good reason. Um, I think all studios should have a paper cutter. I think it's really important. Um, I like to have pictures of my family around. These are a couple of my grandmother, and my uncle. There's me and my grandma in 1992 in New Orleans. It's kind of funny. Hey. Um, some other things I pulled out is, again, I found this box while I was moving, and this is full of seven inches that I did artwork for. So I didn't take this photo, but I drew this little toot cloud there for this one. It's pretty funny. Um, I'll just show you a couple. Um, this is for Vetiver great San Francisco band. They did some UK singles that are really cool. This was the first thing I ever made music wise. 
and it might be the best cover I've ever made. It's just like a big lump. Um, but this is a seven inch and we only made a hundred and it's a lathe cut record, which means they're each made like in real time with a, a cutting needle. And we had it made in New Zealand, I think. Can I ask you a question about Please. that? Please, I'm yes. curious about. Um, and I yes. just want to remind everyone, if anyone has any questions along the way, feel free to write them in the chat and I will read them aloud to Nat. But yes. I was just curious if for that Birds of America image that you created, that lump, yes. um, what material you used originally to do that, if you used ink or... So again, this, I, press, I printed this on a letter press. Mm. So that's, that's a piece of cut out uh, linoleum and I printed on this really thick cardstock. It's kind of like the, the paper, like if you bought a ream of paper, it would be that sort of thick binding or cushion that they put in between. Um, so it's a very thick cardstock and it really soaked up and ate up the ink a lot. So each one has a little bit of a different texture on it. And I really printed them way too, uh, with too much pressure. So you can really feel the letters on there as well, which I loved, I love that stuff, but maybe, and I just, I hand drew a little cloud on the back back there. Um, but again, I'm a big believer in documents and I can't speak for the music on here, but I'm really glad that I have a document of, of that time, you know? Um, I think that's one of the things I love about art is it just being a record of things. Um, so that first seven inch that I showed you, was part of a series of like 14 or 15 that I did with my friend, Joe. He had this record label and I think they went into business because they decided making letter pressed seven inches was a good business decision. But um, these are all like cut out of linoleum, printed on a letter press and with lead type, um, usually in editions of 500. So printing, folding, stuffing so amazing process really great process um it's really it's really good for you um there's a i have a, several more in that like th this is again linoleum and lead type um wood type with some linoleum it was a great also a great way to just try out design ideas because i had someone who just would let me do whatever i wanted so these were like little mini art pieces. Um, I can't, I will admit that I often didn't listen to the music before I made the cover, sorry. But um, and this one kind of folds over. It's like a ghost in the wind. Um, yeah, I'll just, I mean, I know this is kind of boring, but uh, you find a couple more that are cool. This one's cool. Whitey on the moon. Um, this band, people know who this band is, I think. But this was like, all I did was type on that one. And um, yeah, I made a lot of, I, re I really like making records, you know. Um, I love music, I love the packaging, I love the physical object. Um, and some of them I didn't print. That's sort of a example of a collage. But yeah. Good. It's nice to have this, you know, it even has a cool little lock and everything. Um, more of the studio, another Thomas Campbell piece. Um, my wife made this drawing of Dr. Bronner. Um, this is my little uh, like mail order station. When people order prints and things from me, I put in like little postcards and there's my tube and my paper roll. Um, but um, I, so another thing I wanted to show, so I, I uh, do some artwork for, for skateboards. I like skateboarding. I've always loved skateboarding, very important part of my life. Um, and I work with this company called Uma. Uma. And this is a skateboard graphic that's fairly recent. Um, and it's kind of cool because you can see this wood grain that sort of pops out in that pink. It's a, it's, Rather than a printed color, it's like a stained veneer. It's a really cool printing process. But as I was going through some things, I found, it's for a different board, but I found the sort of original 
artwork that we piece together. So you can see these leaves here, and then these faces are some of these here. So assembled later digitally, but it's kind of cool to see them, you know, next to each other here. I don't know. I always love seeing the original. And this is just ink on paper. But yeah, Luma Skateboards. If you're in the writing skateboards, check it out. They're fun. Um, these are some other drawings from that era. You know, so Tom, I mentioned my friend uh, Thomas Campbell before. But he and I were working on this skateboard stuff together and he is a really good art director. And so I would give him my drawings and he would put, make, pick the colors and sort of get me out of my comfort zone a little bit, like uh, make something weirder, make something more aggressive, things like that. And it, I think it turned out really, really well. Um, I love having art from my friends and people I love around me. Um, I just found this box of art that was in a garage as well. Um, I wanted to show you guys this. This is a drawing by my friend Travis Millard, amazing illustrator. Um, we traded some art and I was lucky enough to get this original from him that I need to put back up on the wall. Um, I think this was made into a, a t-shirt for a band called Tortoise, which is pretty cool because I really like that band. Um, what else do we have in here? Um, are you guys into Bread and Puppet Theater? The Vermont Collective, they put on these amazing performances um, with giant puppets and music and dance, but they also have a really cool print shop. And every now and then I go online and I buy some of their uh, woodcuts, which I think they even, I think they carve them out of masonite, which is pretty crazy. Um, Cause that's, seems really hard to do. Um, but I love, I love everything they do. And I love this image and uh, I'm really happy to have that in my life. Um, Here's another piece, another friend, just as, by my friend Kyle, F Kyle Field. Um, he makes music under the name Little, Little Wings. Um, one of my favorite artists. Um, yeah, really, really beautiful stuff. Um, which reminds me, and if you'll, these are the flat files. I just noticed this the other day. So many years ago, 2012, I was in an art show in Paris with Kyle and Alia Shawkat, who is more well-known maybe as an actress, um, but she's also a fantastic artist. And we would pass the time it was a great trip, but we would pass the time installing the art show and making the art by doing portraits of each other. And this is an Alia portrait of me that I came across, me, 2012 me, that I came across recently. And it was a nice memory to have. Um, been in the process of trying to organize my flat files and it's daunting. Um, this is uh, by Zio Ziegler, another fantastic artist who worked on a project with him six or seven years ago. And we were sitting there drinking coffee and he was scribbling in his sketchbook. And when I was done with my coffee, he handed me that. And again, cool memory, cool memory. Um, if it's okay with, I don't wanna be, uh, too boring or anything, but if it's okay with you guys, I, I'll just show some things that I have around um, that I think are interesting and uh, questions, comments, criticisms. I'd love to hear it, um, but I'll show you a few things uh, 
that I've found and are new are again new to me. And uh, let's take it. Let's just let's just take a look in the files, guys. Let's just take a look in the files. Back in this file. Um, so I mentioned that I was when I lived in California. I played in a band, but one of the best thing one of the best things about being in a band is like making all the posters and all the flyers and stuff. So this was this was a silkscreen three color silkscreen poster that I made for a show that we did record release party i'm so glad i still have some of those but really fun and this this was before i really did anything in the computer so all of this stuff was like going to kinko's and sort of taking transparencies and i don't know if you can see that but like taping the transparencies together so they would match and that's how you would make the film, transparency film for your uh, for your poster. And one thing about being a printmaker and making a lot of prints is you have a lot of prints laying around. You got a lot of stuff, a lot of ephemera, a lot of a lot of cool stuff, man. Um, here's this was our tour poster from back then. I'm working on a project where I'm trying to scan all my flyers and stuff. But um, you kind of see close. To, I, I I saw this as like sort of the the details of what the band was about, or talked about, or sang about, or thought about. But yeah, um, what else we got in here? There's another Thomas Campbell piece. This one's advertising a show at Mollusk out in San Francisco. You can tell I'm very disorganized because I also just have like watercolor drawings in here as well. Um, oh, this really cool poster of Harry Nelson, which I love that there was a time in popular culture where you could put out a record and this was the fold out poster. It's so cool. I feel like I've this is what I felt like for the entirety of 2020. All right, let's look at a few more things. Um, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Ooh, this is a piece by Lookout in Wonderland, an LA duo. So this is a sewn, beautiful fabric piece. Gorgeous. I need to get that up on the wall as well. Um, so I make a lot of calendars over the years and I recently came across like some of my first ones. So this is from 2008 and 2009. This was a March to March calendar because I was always late making them to sell them in January. So this one starts in March and goes down to March. I don't even think we made it all the way through March, maybe just to like March 15th. Um, here's another one. This was like my Zodiac, Zodiac calendar from 2009, 2007, excuse me. Nice colors on that, but I tried to get all the different Zodiac signs in there, you know? I was really into a lot of lines back then. So if it's funny to think about, so this was like 2007, it's almost all line, there's almost no shape. Fast forward to 2018, and it's almost all shape and no line, right? But I've, I think the calendars are real important to me because it's a thing that I can do every year. It's like a little little way to mark the time. It's a it's a it's a useful object, which feels good to me. Um, here's another one. I've been also thinking about maybe trying to make a book of all these calendars now that I have a handful of them. Um, this one was always a favorite of mine. 
but this was a, this one's like a good balance between shape and line. But it's also hard to sell calendar prints when they're it's not that year anymore. But you know, live and learn. This was the first. So new, this is a little secret. I actually don't print many of these silk screens. I sort of farm that out to my friend Nat Swope in Oakland, California. Amazing silk screen artist. And I don't, you can't, it's hard to tell, but he has the best black inks you'll ever see. So rich and smooth and you can't scuff them. And he did this one for me. And this was maybe the first thing we ever did. And ever since, I mean, he's my guy for sure. For sure. But still have, and then this was the most recent one, 2021. So I did this drawing, ink drawing, maybe about a third of this in actual size. And I have some kids that are learning the alphabet. And I knew B was for bird, but I didn't want it to be for bird. And I struggled with that for a long time. And um, one night, my wife, Katie Cole, said, B is for beginning. And it fit perfect. And that's, that's that. I draw a lot of birds. Birds are... A big one for me. Um, let's cross the carpet here. As you're crossing over, can I ask you a question? Of course, of okay. course. So Ian's wondering um, what the process of your work ethic and daily routine is like. Do you sit down at the same time to draw every day, like practicing? And does that get turned into production work? Or do you set an intention of creating the production work? That's a good question. And it's routine and habit is something I struggle with a lot, uh, especially in this past year. Um, I am a parent and a partner and I have a lot of things that are uh, asking me for my attention all the time. So when I'm in a good groove, I sort of do a, I try to do a more traditional like nine to five get up, make sure everybody's got their breakfast, get my coffee, and I sit down and see what I need to do that day. Um, as a lot of, like a lot of people that I know that try to make a living doing art, uh, I do it in a lot of, there's a lot, of, no one does it quite the same way. And for me, it's a mixture of art shows and making prints, but also uh, commercial work, uh, doing drawings for skateboards or for an album cover. Um, occasionally I get an editorial commission or an illustration job. That sometimes they're very small, sometimes they're very big. So you never, no day is exactly like the others. And uh, some weeks require 10 hour work days of getting the art show ready. And some days I can kind of fritter around back and forth. Um, so as far as a set schedule, no, I do not have one. Uh, I try to get as much as done as I can in the morning before lunchtime. Um, that's, I feel like that's one of my sharpest and my most uh, able to both receive and let go. Um, but it really does depend on the day. And it, it, I think like a lot of people, I know what's good for me and I don't always do that. I know it's what's good for me is to have a quiet morning and to sit and draw aimlessly for 20 minutes before I get started. Um, but sometimes I get sucked into reading the newspaper or looking at my phone or something. Um, but I'm trying, I'm trying hard. I actually, I just got, I just got this book. I don't know if you can see that. It's by Beth Pickens. It's called Make Your Art No Matter What. I'm only about two chapters into it, but it seems like this addresses 
a lot of those points. Um, my friend, uh, Wendy McNaughton is an amazing illustrator, teacher, drawer person in San Francisco. And she posted about this on, uh, her Instagram and, uh, it's just one of those things. I, I, I need. I need to read that. I bet I do. Um, I could use some some improvement in this. And it looks like. I mean, talks about time. Talks about money. Talks about stress. Um, I'm I'm digging it so far, and I think it's I think it's insightful. Um, but I also have come to. I think a lot of it too is just recognizing my own how I am. Um, like I can, I can try to force myself to do push-ups every morning, but I know I'm, I'm not gonna, I don't, I, I don't do good habits that well. So some of the things that I've recognized about myself are after the coffee, that's my window to get a lot of things done, get that momentum going. But I know that after three, four o'clock, I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm not going to get a lot of meaningful, creative thinking done. That's when I save the more repetitive, more physical tasks, like building, uh, like the front, like built, like building a panel for, for painting on or tearing paper or cleaning brushes and things like that. I do that stuff in the afternoon because my brain sort of, stops being quite as sharp around them. Um, but I th also think it's fine and okay to still be figuring that out at, even at this point in my life and creative process. Um, Cause it just means I can figure things out more and hopefully get better at doing things. Um, and I'm a different person than I was when I was 25 and could, you know, stay up all night cutting wood, you know, but I, ho I hope that's, I don't, that didn't sound too helpful, but I, I hope it's, but it's real. And, and I hope that's kind of, kind of helpful. Um, one thing I do love to do that is always, always works. Um, you know, there's some artists who they always have like a, like a show on Netflix going or something, or they always have a podcast going or, a book on tape. Um, I've tried all those things and a lot of them can, can feel real decadent. Um, but I know that I get my best thinking and my best work done when I'm listening to music and I pay attention and I don't pay attention and I'm just sitting drawing. And the more drawing I do, the more things open up. Um, so I have this desk. This is the desk that I'm at right now um, that I, you know, I bought it off Craigslist in Oakland 15 years ago when I moved into a new place. And it's just, it, it's like, it, like it fits, it fits me, you know? Um, but I have like my brushes, uh, my inks, and I can just sit here and draw and make a big pile of drawings and they have has nice deep drawers that i can put the drawings into um that works for me you know um let me show you some of these drawings that i've been doing lately um this this is actually more of a i was in i was making some work for a show that's up right now in la it's a two-person show with my good friend Lewis Schmidt. And we made work that sort of a conversation. Um, and I really wanted to make an exit door. Um, but I like using sort of silly and humble materials. So this is this is actually just this is a painted two by four um, with, with house paint. Um, I made two of them. I sent the one I liked the best to the art show. But this one's here, and uh, I like I like having it here. It's a good escape. But here's some here's some ink drawings. I like to just sit down and I've been drawing. I've been liking these balances. Been working on these things of just really light line and big shape. 
I'm still kind of obsessed with trying to draw as little as possible and rely on on shapes. And I like, uh, I don't know, for like a year or something, I've been drawing these, I call them the booms, but it's like they're explosions or they're a sun or a pow or a bang. But I, I, I like to try and to pair these sort of sharp and pointy shapes with these soft and, and round ones. But I, I like to just sit here, you know, and, and just do just do 10 drawings or something in the morning. Um, it's good for you. It's good for you. Um, I was going through my files and stuff earlier, and I just found a bunch of these sort of real loose, quick, quick ones. Um, also, I really love posters. Like, I love poster making, and I love graphics, you know, and uh, this is sort of another like public service announcement that I thought would make a good poster sometime, you know, and this was like April 2020. So there wasn't even, whew, we still had a year to go, man, um, in county. But here's another one. I thought this would be, I never quite figured this out. I thought this would be a good poster or a print, but I love the idea of like the guitar pedal as like a, as like a metaphor sort of a thing. Um, I will often say that when I make a woodcut that I'm taking my drawing and putting it through the woodcut pedal because the medium of the woodcut informs the image so much and it makes it sound or look in a way that I never could. So this, this poster for me, like what I wrote down in my notebook was uh putting it through the peace pedal, you know, like putting your art or your music or your mind, stepping on the peace pedal, you know? I don't know, I haven't quite figured that one out. I, I think at some point it'll, it'll do something. Um, but um, there's another, some more booms. Um, I also save all my drawings all the time because I like to revisit them um for other things um like this is just a big pile of here's a good one so so this is a drawing let me tell you about this one okay so i have some friends that are in a band called sylvan esso and they were going to do a tour that was, it's normally a duo, right? And uh, they were gonna do a tour of a uh, full band, like a full band was gonna play all their musical arrangements that are only usually played by two people. And uh, they wanted something that would articulate that sort of madness and joyful chaos. So this was, this is what the, this is the drawing, right? So this is pencil, on paper, and I think I think I got one in here. That was how I made the file, and this is what it looks like. We turned it into a poster, and that's the final right there. So it's like, I think they, I don't know, I think it turned out pretty cool, but I like to see that drawing. And then you bring it into the computer and you can sort of bump up the contrast and make it more photocopied looking. Um, but I love that transition. And this is another example of like this drawing went through the silk screen pedal and it came out and looked like that. And I probably couldn't, I don't know. Thanks silk screen for making those lines look really cool. You know, um, I really like scanning pencil drawings with really high contrast because you get these really cool edges that, you know, everyone likes to take things in Illustrator and make them all vectorized, but man, you lose that, hum that you, you lose that human touch of the, the funny line and the, um, I've actually done a lot of stuff with Sylvanesso, their 
fantastic band. Um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm showing you guys a lot of poster stuff and it's because I really like working with people and I like having a community and I like, I like it when my work is of use to people, you know? Um, here's another, the last project that I got to work on before the whole lockdown stuff was called the Cosmic Prom. And uh, it was with a band called Mountain Man, uh, one of which is in the band Sylvanesso, um, but it's three friends who make beautiful music. And the idea was to put on a series of concerts, three nights of concerts, all with a different theme. The, the, the main theme was Cosmic Prom, but there, the, th the themes were the starry night under the canopy of the forest and under the sea. So this, this poster was sort of a souvenir uh, of that three night event. It was in uh, Durham, North Carolina at Duke University. Um, just such a great experience. We built sets and uh, projections and uh, it was a wonderful, wonderful thing. Um, in fact, I'm gonna flip you around so you can see see this. I'll show this thing to you. And if, and if I saw someone had a question, do you wanna shout that out while I open this? Yeah, the question is, how do you decide on the medium for each project? Ink, paint, collage, woodcut, et cetera. I mean, it's pretty, again, I would love to say that I have a plan. I would love to say that it's all very academic and logical, but it really has to do with how I'm feeling and what I'm into at that moment. Um, so, or just sometimes it's like, oh, well, I, I think that'll work best as a, as a woodcut. And then sometimes I just don't feel like doing a woodcut. I'm much more into making a painting. And I go through these phases of, I just want to make paintings or I, woodcuts are very labor intensive. Um, so I sort of keep some distance between those projects, depending on if I have space for it, if I have the time for it, if I have the mental bandwidth for it. Um, but I mean, the reality is I, 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 go with, I go with my gut. I just, I go with how it feels. Um, so that cosmic prom that I was just showing you, I thought it would be really cool in addition to the set designs and uh, the lighting and, and stuff that we did was every night I made like a banner, like sort of a circus. If you think of like a circus banner um, for the prom. So, and I, and I, st I still have them. But, um, so I wanted to show these to you. Um, these are like acrylic on hanging canvas. So this is like, you can see that. But this was like big boy right there. So this was like the all purpose Welcome to the Cosmic Prom. And then we had, this was Below the Sea. And these were all made with the same, the same paint and materials that we made the sets out of. So everything kind of vibrated off of each other. And these, these I mean, do you ever have a chance to paint just on like really heavy raw canvas? Man, it feels, it feels so good. It's just like heavy and tactile. It feels like a big, feels like a big blanket or a big tent or something. Man, it feels good. So yeah, this was, these were fun. Um, be really cool one day to, you know, maybe in like 80 years, there'll be, you know, the, these will be in a, I don't know, a museum. That'd be cool. Because they, they don't deserve to be wrapped up in a box in my studio, you know? Um, but again, it's really cool to, uh, to have those, uh, 
records of things. Um, let me flip this around again. Um, still more flat files here. Um, music's very important. This is a great record. This is the new one by Natural Information Society. Highly recommended. Um, my friend Phil, who lives in Wales, sent me this really cool painting. Of the guy taking a bath in a coffee cup or fainting in a coffee cup. It's a little pencil cup. And I thought this was really cool. I wanted to show this to you. This is, uh, I was really sick like two weeks ago and my son made this drawing for me and he has, he made up this way to feel better, which is really cool. Like, so this is me asleep and this is an angel sort of watching over me or a fairy or something. And um, this is me waking up. Um, this is me, I guess, in the bathroom. And the angel has sort of like absorbed my sickness. And now he's laid out, but I'm awake. Um, it's a whole, I don't know, his ways of, I like seeing how different people th think of narratives and things. And uh, I don't know, this just makes me really happy. Proud, proud dad moment. Um, oh, I wanted to show you guys something else here. I have hidden flat files all over the place here. Um, this is, uh, sorry, I thought I had it all out. Um, this, oh, this wasn't what I meant to pull out, but this is one of them. This was like, I occasionally will make like a, well, very rarely will I make like a political poster that's this explicit. This was one of them. Um, but uh, I made a series of prints. Let's see. Yeah, so these were another one. This was for a benefit. for a program called the Art Assignment, which was a, a PBS show. But this was one of these like poster projects where I was really into looking at like old, uh, like children's illustrations and like elementary school posters. And I, I, my dream is to one day paint these on the side of a side of an elementary school somewhere. I think that'd be really cool. Um, that wasn't what I was really looking for, but um, this is what I was looking for. There's a, someone asked me to make a, uh, a woodcut of Alan Watts. And that's what that is. Um, so is there one in there? No, let me find one. Okay, so not so long ago, I, uh, I went to Hawaii and I taught a workshop about sort of mixed media bookmaking and zine making and stuff. So it was a mixture of letterpress and risograph and uh, how to manipulate them all while kind of honoring the materials, but also not being beholden to them. So this was a book that I made called Advice. And I thought this, this was kind of unique. So the, essentially I printed on a letterpress, I printed this type and I cut out this wood and printed it. And then I took that print and I ran it through a photocopier and then manipulate and then made a collage out of that and then ran that through a risograph machine. So you get this cool effect of the woodcut texture and the type texture, but it's actually all a risograph. So this is like, I don't know, maybe this is like my version of like be here now or something. Some sort of warm up. 
dive. And again, this is an inked up piece of found wood that I manipulated on a photocopy machine. This is, yeah, I like that. Again, for me, I think a lot about how to make forms without using lines. I think that's a real interesting puzzle. Sniff. This was wood, this is lead type, and then this was just cut out paper. Here. Touch. That's it. So that was in Honolulu. Yeah, it's, and it's just um, sewn on the top there. But uh, yeah, this is one of my favorite things I've done in a, in a long time. And, uh, you know, the best part of it was, was I got to do it in a workshop setting um, surrounded with students and other people just making things. And I feel like that's kind of when the cool stuff happens, you know, is when you're around people and enjoying each other and having fun. And um... Nat, speaking of that, I was curious if yeah. um, the pandemic and quarantine has changed your art press process or where you make your art from. Where, as in like sort of emotionally? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean... Of course, you know, I think about that a lot. Like what, what could my art possibly be, be, have to do with anything right now? You know, I think about that a lot. That's one of the reasons I got that book too, is um, to help me articulate some thoughts about that. Um, making artwork can sometimes feel like a luxury and uh insignificant or really egotistical, I feel like sometimes for me. Um, but when it feels good and it works, it, it is the mo it, it is important. And uh, I think it's important to, to, to keep participating in, in, in whatever way that you can and feel good about and uh, force yourself to to try to do things and be open um, to other people's perspectives and viewpoints. And uh, um, yeah, I mean, it really has. I mean, it's hard to articulate, I think, in words, but uh, yeah, I, I, I have a lot of, there's a lot more mental gymnastics I have to do to have it make sense for an art show to make sense or for me to offer some image up to the to the world you know uh surround you know with, with the state of the state of things you know um not that things haven't always been messy but uh you know you gain perspective as you as you move along here you know um hey i just i just found the original drawing for that cosmic prom thing it's pretty cool. Um, oh, this is a, I don't think I ever dishened this or anything, but I really, really enjoy making woodcuts and relief prints. And uh, it's one of my, I went to, I went to college in, in Indiana, in Muncie, Indiana, at Ball State. And, um, I studied printmaking and that's where it really got the, the woodcut stuff really got its hooks into me. Um, let me, let me, let me, let me share something with you guys. Um, I had a really great uh, printmaking professor and he turned me on to, turned me on to, where is he? This guy. Antonio Frasconi, one of my favorite artists. Uh, 
he did a lot of, I mean, he did mostly woodcuts, almost exclusively. He did a lot. He also, are you still there? There we go. He also did a lot of uh, kid books, but his work is absolutely incredible and really inspiring to me. Um, he used a lot of really cool like wood grain textures in his painting or in his drawings and his woodcuts and illustrations. This to me is just, it's so graphic and so expressive. Um, it has a timeless, real timeless quality to it. Um, and again, I, I love that he used, I think, I think he was from Uruguay, but he was really involved in politics. Um, but I love that he used his work, not only for sort of fine art, but also for, for kids book illustrations and uh, uh, political posters. Um, big fan, big fan of Antonio Frasconi. Speaking of kids book illustrations, um, one of your guests is wondering what you liked to draw when you were a kid. What did I like to draw when I was a kid? Uh, I think like a lot, I think like a lot of kids, I was, I was really into, I mean, the first stuff that I really remember drawing was like, you know, kindergarten, like battle scenes, like drawing things with my friends and like shooting lasers and Star Wars type of stuff. The same sort of stuff that I would play. Like when I was a kid, I would play, uh, you know, battles and, Star Wars and uh, pretend to be, you know, cat burglars and stuff. So I would draw stuff like that. But I also got really into Mad Magazine and like comic books. And I would try to, to draw those um, like Charlie Brown and Snoopy. Um, and uh, what else? I think like in high school, when I started sort of really getting more interested in drawing and in art, I was really into, of course, like skateboard graphics and things, but really into drawing stuff that was like, uh, I want to say cool, you know, like cool stuff. Like I wanted to draw really cool cars or uh, like uh, a tank or something. Um, I just wanted, I just mostly, I just wanted my drawings to look cool and to look good and for people to be impressed by them. Um, and I think it's real important when you learn to draw, when you're learning to draw, to try all that stuff out. Um, my favorite classes that I took like, in school were figure drawing classes um, because it's, it's not so much about the thing, it's not so much about what your drawing looks like in the end, it's all about really learning how to, how to look at something. Uh, like if you're drawing a model, and you, you mean, and you can just, if you can somehow find that shoulder curve with your, with your arm there, that is, that is like, you know, hitting, hitting the right note on the saxophone or something. And uh, I think that, that learning how to see and learning how to draw, learning how to see things and how to take that and push it out through here. That's, that's how you get to the, the, the root of what drawing's about, which is articulating some kind of humanity or some kind of common experience that a word just isn't good enough for. Um, and I think that's what resonates with me so much about things that are a little rougher around the edges or uh, imperfect, you know? Um, but, uh, But yeah, but to answer this, the original question, as a kid, I was mostly just into drawing like typical boy stuff. Uh, um, yeah. In response to you talking about the pandemic, was new songs yeah. for birds to sing an expression of the time? And in those works, did the illustrations come first or the phrases? Um. I guess, you, I guess you're talking about my show at Gallery 16 in San Francisco. Um, that was the name of that show. 
And uh, it 100% did all come from that. Um, there's definitely some of the similar and familiar language from past work, the, the, the shapes of the birds and, um, but I write in my notebooks, like if you were to look at my sketchbook now, there's very little drawing in it. It's mostly lines of like, like, uh, like titles and phrases. And uh, I, I, I don't want to call them lyrics because I wouldn't call them like that poetic, but just like words that I think sound good and um, resonate. And I had new songs for birds to sing written on my whiteboard for months. And uh, I sort of made, I made things that, that fell under that rooftop. Um, and there was a lot of different kind of work in there. There was a birds and those birds obviously related, but I also did these big hanging canvas pieces that I, I, I thought of as, as portals. He's like, uh, there was a book I had when I was a kid, my grandma used to read to me called The Magic Blanket. And it was about this kid and his dog. And every time he put the blanket on, it turned him into something else. He was a superhero. He was in a tent. He was flying through the air. He was, uh, a captain, you know, he, it, it was, and I, and I thought of these hanging canvas paintings as magic blankets or, or portals as something you can almost kind of step into. And it, those were 100% about escape or exit, you know, of uh, wanting to, uh, wanting to, to, yeah, to, to not think about everything all things, everything happening all the time, constantly, a portal would be great. And, uh, um, but that can also be a bit of a downer. That can be a bit of a bummer. So I, I also want to be able to find the beauty and the, the, even just, even if it's just like an appreciation of the predicament, I want to be able to articulate that in a way that's not negative or positive. Um, and but it is human and i think that's that's my aim i think ultimately i want to get i want to get at something that can articulate just if the human experience is a, is a big flower with ten thousand petals on it i would love for the things that i make to articulate one, one of those petals you know to maybe narrow in on one of those things that's really hard to put our finger on um, so yeah, also the, also the way that I work is I really, as I mean, I'm sure as you can tell by going through my stuff, I, I, I wouldn't say that I'm organized. I wouldn't say that, you know, I'm not, a, I'm a recondo sort of, uh, I'm not a hoarder, but I, I, I keep a lot of stuff and I have poor time management and uh, I kind of take care of what's in front of me and then move on to the next thing that's in front of me. And when it comes to an art show, as much as I would like to have it all planned out a year ahead of time and be ticking off the boxes and no stress, easy peasy, um, what I do is I think about it and I think about it and I do little drawings and then I do drawings. And then for two months, I just, blah, I just go off. And uh, so that show was entirely about the pandemic time because it was made right, right, all up in it, you know? Um, so, yeah, but that's a great question, thank you. Um, it's really cool for me. Well, number one, it's really weird for me to be doing this because I, I can't see everyone. I can't see anyone. I'm looking at myself in the phone and talking. So it's a little bit like I'm talking about myself to myself, which feels pretty weird, but it's also, Really cool to hear questions and uh, comments um, because I think it's really easy for all of us to feel isolated. And I never know if, you know, I don't know if anyone looks at or cares about 
what I do that much that they would uh, remember or, or have feelings about it, you know? So it's cool when, when people, it's, it's cool that people are into it and have a question about it because it, it forces me to articulate things a little bit more off the cuff, which is, which is important. Um, so what else can I show you guys? Um, if there's anything anybody would like to see, I'm more than happy to dig something out. Um, otherwise I will show you another, I'll show you another couple cool things on my way to the garage where I do some messy things and then we can talk about that. So yeah. Nat, I just wanted to tell you, we've hit our hour mark, um, okay. but we can keep going for as long as you're comfortable with. So. Okay. How about like a couple more minutes and I'll show Sounds this good. thing and then we can mm -hmm. take it from there. Is that cool? Sounds great. That's great. All right. Thank you. Okay. Like I said, oh. I just go ahead. I just got a question for you. Um, what are your music influences? Um, music influences. Um, tell you what, I'll think about that on my way to the garage. But I wanted to show you guys, my, my wife and I are really big Browdigan fans. Richard Browdigan. And this is our little Browdigan section. Whenever we go to garage sales and we see Browdigan books, we buy them because they're really, like how good is this cover? This is just a wonderful, wonderful cover. They don't make them like that anymore. Um, here. It's actually good timing because my phone battery is going to die pretty soon. So we're going to go out into the garage. Zone. Um, I also have to live with other people in my life. Um, so this is my little, this is my little dirty zone because I have this little zone in the garage. The other reason I'm showing you this is because, hey, visiting artists to the Berkeley Art Museum sometimes don't have the most awesome studios and you can work on a homemade table in your garage and uh, make stuff. Hey, this is, a, remember that cosmic prom stuff I was talking about? This is one of the wooden stars that we made. This is, my good friend Aaron Bowers helped me out making all this stuff and uh, it's a nice souvenir. I'm working on this painting. It's hard to see. It's a painting of a boat um, for an album cover. These are some little flower sculptures I made to give to some friends. Um, but I just scored all this wood. So I'm gonna make a bunch of stuff out of wood pretty soon, I hope. Um, also, I think it's really important that if you're an artist and you're trying to do stuff, you should learn how to use power tools. It's really important because you may not make things out of wood, but you can make frames, you can make a chair, you can make a table, you can like fix things in your house. I really think uh, learning how to use power tools, it's a really big, big deal. Um, so someone was talking about music. Music's such a big part of my life. This is the studio sound machine. This is the, the tape selection for the moment. Um, but as far as like, oh geez. Uh, as far as like musical influences, well, I'll tell you what, I'm not a great musician. I'm really not. Uh, I know some chords on the guitar. Uh, I can I know, like a bass guitar and I like to sing, but um, what inspires me is stuff that's like the art I like, like, like rough around the edges, but ultimately really human. Um, so, but that, but that is sort of beyond genre, right? Like there's a friend of mine who refers to the kind of music he likes as, as roots. And I think what he means by that is stuff that isn't a lot of like fanfare. There's not a lot of spit and polish. There's not a lot of refinement. It's, it's, it tries to get to the heart of the matter. And I find a lot of that in 
um, a lot of folk music, a lot of dub reggae music, mostly, mostly like pre 80s sort of stuff. I love jazz music. I love, I love the music my friends make, you know, uh, I, there's, there's nothing like seeing a friend of yours play a song that they've written. Um, it makes it so much more special and such a window into their personality. Um, but so it's really hard for, for me to say music wise, but like for right now, I'm, I've been really into like these, this Neil Young archives that just came out and I go through phases of like, I don't ever want to hear Neil Young again. And that's all I want to listen to. Um, but right now I'm in a phase of, I can listen to some Neil Young. Um, I've been listening to a lot of Fred Neil. I've been listening, I've been reading a book about Thelonious Monk. So I've been trying to like educate myself on the music of Thelonious Monk. And um, my son, who's three years old, is really into the, that uh, Laurie Anderson song, Oh Superman. Um, and I was not that schooled on Laurie Anderson. And I bought him a Laurie Anderson record and I've been really digging into Laurie Anderson and she is heavy duty and I'm opening myself up to receive some heavy Laurie Anderson vibes and it's working, it's working really good. Um, let's do this question and maybe, maybe that we can call it if that's okay, okay. unless there's okay. anybody else. There's just two more questions. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Okay. I'm so the, I'm, and I'm good. I'm happy. <laughs> there's another music related question. What bands yeah. have you made album covers for besides Sylvan Esso, particularly bands you like? Okay. Um, Vetiver. They are a San Francisco band. I made three or four album covers for them. Became really good friends with Andy from Vetiver. Um, I, 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 I just love their evolution. I love their music. Um, I made a couple seven inches for Bonnie Prince Billy. I liked his music, but those are, you know, that's kind of just like, I just kind of lucked into those. They didn't really ask me to, but, um, man, I know that I've made, it's hard for me to, Neil Halstead. I made a Neil Halstead album cover. He's great. He's in that band Mojave three and he was in slow dive. Um, if someone whose record I have made for them and I'm not mentioning them right now is watching, they're gonna be bummed, but I can't think offhand. Um, I also used to make a living like doing graphic design, like doing like reissue layout. So I would like scan an old record and clean it up in Photoshop and then get it pressed. So it'd be repressed. Um, did a lot of cool records for that. Um, but uh, I did, a, I did a, a record for this band called Crypticize a long time ago, 10 years ago. I think they only made one record, but they were great. Um, musician Chris Cohen, was, was, that was, he was like one of the main songwriters. That was a really, really good record. Um, made a lot of posters for cool bands that I like. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. It's, my memory's kind of a fog right now um i'll try to i'll try to think again i this is usually the time that i would like go on my website and look at or like google search what i've done um well i was my, going to say anyway at the end if you have any additional recommendations whether it's preferred materials okay or um information about anything that was asked or brought up during your workshop you could send them to me and I, i'll send them in a follow-up email as well so that you'll have okay. some more time you don't have to be completely put Great. on the spot to think of everything no. in this exact moment i appreciate um, it. i appreciate that. and then your last question was did you like going to art school in a small town versus a big city um i did i did well i mean i'll, I'll say this my first two years of art school, well, you know, it was an art program like in a, in a university, like it was a college, right? So I didn't go to like, I didn't go to like an art school, which is, which is fine. And I think one of the reasons I avoided some like really insane student loans, but um, 
my first two years were rough. Like I did not dig it at all. Um, I think I got a D in art history. I like, you know, it was, everything was like colored pencil renderings and it was, it was very difficult, very, very hard. And I was not into it. I almost stopped going to school. Um, but then that third year I was able to get, I was able to sort of pick and choose the programs because you, you're, you're, you can sort of pick what your area is going to be. And I got really into my printmaking and my drawing classes. And that's when something clicked and I was like, this is good. And I was able to like take advantage of the studio space, um, you know, wait till people leave, go in there at night, um, have a friend or two. Um, you can stay up late smoking cigarettes and making prints with, you know? Um, but the cool thing about Muncie was it was, it was a college town, right? So the summertime empty and man, it was, you know, it was great. You just go riding your bike in the middle of the night when, uh, you know, this was also pre internet sort of stuff. So you had to come up with stuff to do. And that was either let's play music let's make this dumb sculpture and put it somewhere around town. Let's go to the drive-in. Um, it was a, it was a cool magical time. And I think there was, it was less, maybe there was less trouble to get into. There was definitely more ways to have fun with no money. A lot of swimming and quarries and stuff like that. Um, but you know, the first thing I did when I got out of school was I went to San Francisco. Um, which was a big city that I really wanted to go to. And I appreciate, I appreciate the little and I appreciate the big, you know? Um, but I definitely think the most important thing, whether you're in a small town or a big town is finding your people. Um, I think it's, we all need our people. We need our tribe. We need our family of people. And in both those cases, I was very lucky as I found some, I found my people. I was able to find some people who were funny and exciting and got me and I got them and we were able to get into stuff together. And um, I think that's real important. I think that's one of the most important things is to, to find your people, you know, um, that gives you the, gives you the, the, the energy and the excuse to, to, to do stuff, you know? And, uh, yeah, that's my answer. Well, Nat, I want to thank you for doing this studio visit today. I, um, I know that for me personally, it's been very inspiring. It's made me want to sit down and draw for the rest of my Sunday. And I have a feeling that other people have well, also had a lot that they, have been I, able to learn from it. I appreciate that. I was definitely, I thought I was prepared, but I felt pretty unprepared, but I feel like, uh, thanks for being patient with me and thanks for looking at all the things and indulging me. I, it's a great way for me to spend my afternoon, you know? Um, so thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Great. Thank you. And thanks, right. everyone, well, thanks everyone for joining. Have a good Sunday, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.